From where I stand, liberty is the most beautiful of all. America with its mountain peaks and amber waves makes my heart sing. But it's not the trampling of a leaf I'm afraid of. It's the trampling of the liberty that makes America the beautiful. I don't like to mince words. I guess that makes me less a politician and more a small business owning father who is sometimes tired. But I don't pledge allegiance to tyranny. I pledge allegiance to what our banner stands for, to the freedom and justice it was made to represent. I don't need my government to babysit me, and my freedom is far more valuable than their freebies. Freedom is a right, not owned by tyrants, corporations, or politicians. It's God-given, and it's inalienable. We won't agree on everything, but we who love liberty can agree that government must be limited so that liberty can be preserved. We must question and challenge government all the time. Otherwise, they will trample us every time. If I may paraphrase Raphael Cruz, let me say that next to the Bible, I know of no greater documents than the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. I believe this is because they were written by men on their knees. In recent years, we've seen the growth of government and the fading of American standards. Its moral compass adrift. Things that would have been unthinkable a score of years ago are now grudgingly accepted because they've been implemented under cover of night, slowly and relentlessly, while those of us with families to support and jobs to do have been doing those jobs. But we must stand. Many of our elected officials have ignored our Constitution. But what they forget is that the Constitution does not grant us our rights. Rights belong to us. They are not given because we already own them and they cannot be taken away. The Constitution offers a reminder of those rights. And it's high time we reminded our leaders that they follow our laws or they go home. It's time we stopped living under the thumb of government for false promises of security and trade for our liberty. We accept no middle ground. When elected, I will be one small man. I cannot promise that I alone can change everything. What I can do is stand by my oath. It's time to take America back to peacefully but courageously take hold on the freedom that so many have spilled their blood to offer us. To grip it firmly so that our children and grandchildren must not need spill their blood to take it up again. It's time to stop tolerating tyranny in any form it takes. To tell them plainly, keep your hands off our businesses, our farms, our families, our faith, and our freedom. It's time they knew that liberty means liberty. We will not have checkpoints on our roadways. We will not read others' mail or spy on them without cause. We will not tolerate officers who beat people by the side of the road or judges who blackmail their charges. It's time to remind them that our money is not to be wasted, that our land belongs to us, that accountability is demanded, and that freedom reigns. It's time to remind them that in liberty, rights cannot be taken away by petty laws. To boldly remind them that you do not tell a free people they cannot have guns. They tell you they can. Some may argue that I lack experience, that I'm naive, radical, or even simple-minded. But I say that if the result of said experience is the waste and unrestricted taxation we have seen, if the result of their experience is harassing citizens for petty faults and running governments like organized crime. If the result of that experience is violating the rights of a free people, then let me be radical. Let me be simple in their eyes. Let me have the courage to demand liberty for my children and yours. Let me be as the framers, alive, just, free, and on my knees.